model-based control design with ICP and CST from Expert Control. Goal of this presentation is to design a controller in an innovative four steps process for a highly nonlinear hydraulic system which shall be controlled in its position. Here we do not deal with traditional methods of control design since they are complex and very time consuming. ICP's four step process consists of importing measured data, defining closed loop transition time, receiving the suitable model and receiving the optimal controller. The automatic control design is done within few seconds and is only feasible with the software ICP from Expert Control. To give you a quick system overview, please let me show you how ICP and CST can be integrated in real control systems. If you look at a regular control system, you will find at least the following components. A controller, the plant, the actuator and several sensors. And of course suitable hardware to capture the output signals and create measured data out of the real system. The measured data will be imported into ICP. ICP is very easy to handle and creates no interface problems because this software runs on a normal Windows PC. After ICP's short four steps process, the controller parameters have been calculated for a specific controller structure. The controller structures on the target system might be an advanced structure available in CST, a classical PID structure or an individual customer specific controller structure. However, to gain the highest quality, the use of CST is highly recommended because of its various high capable controller structures and the capability to switch these structures while the system is running. Here we can see a hydraulic system which shall be controlled in its position. The output of this hydraulic system is the position which results from the pressure in the hydraulic cylinder. The pressure in the hydraulic cylinder is influenced by the voltage for valve opening which is the control variable. Normally you have to take measured data from all the individual components like actuator and plant to create the suitable models and consequently the suitable controller. This will be a tough job and very time consuming. The philosophy of ICP is to keep it simple. Just measure your system input, here the voltage for the valve, and your system output, the resulting position of the hydraulic cylinder. All the system dynamics are captured in the measured data and will be taken into consideration when designing the control. Let's see now how to work step by step with ICP. In this case the measured data is already imported to ICP. The user has to assign the signals out of the measured data file to ICP's corresponding system input, here the valve voltage, the system output, here the cylinder position, and the time signal. After the columns are assigned, the user can define the model order the real system shall describe with. In this case we select a second order model to have the possibility to control the system with a classical controller structure up to PID. Additionally, we tell ICP that we have here a positioning system. This actually was step 1, acquiring the measurements and reading them into ICP user interface. In step 2, we define the desired step response transition time for the control loop. The user can either choose the desired transition time or simply leave the decision to ICP to find the energy optimized control loop transition time for green engineering. In this case, we have chosen 50 milliseconds for set point transition and disturbance transition time. 
As you know, normally the step response transition time is the result of controller parameters which have been calculated with several time consuming traditional methods like root locus, Bode or Nyquist. With ICP you can define your desired transition time instead of getting it as a result. A very good feature of ICP and CST is the RAM controller function. The RAM controller is able to handle setpoint RAM signals without the undesired tracking error, which is mandatory when using PID structures. The RAM controller itself is part of CST, but here you can tell ICP to calculate the parameters therefore automatically. In the next step, ICP gets started by pressing the Run ICP button. Within a very short period of time, we will be receiving the results of the dynamic model calculated on measured data and a suitable controller based on the dynamic model. Now the entire modeling and control design work is done. We can see the model results on the one hand graphically here on the right, on the other hand numerically here on the left. As you can see in the right diagram, the measurement curve and the model curve match very well. Consequently it is ok to say we have found a good model. And this is very important because a high quality model is the key in a model based control design approach. To be very clear here, a controller which would have been calculated from a bad model may not be used as there is no guarantee it will work. In step 4 we can see all relevant control design results graphically and numerically. In these diagrams closed loop step responses are shown and it is obvious that a set point gets reached in the desired 50 milliseconds. The numerically controlled results are shown in the lower half of ICP's user interface. If the complexity of the system allows to use a classical controller structure up to PID, then the parameters are shown here. As I already mentioned, if the real system is more complex and requires higher order models, classical PID controllers will not be capable to achieve the required closed loop dynamics quality. Therefore, CST offers high capable structures and the flexibility to switch between these structures. The parameters for CST are shown here. The following simulation shows how the calculated controllers perform to a predefined setpoint profile. On the left side you can see the closed loop behavior of the main controller. Step signals are realized with high precision, but RAM signals still with the tracking error. But therefore ICP has calculated the RAM controller. As you can see here on the right side, the steps are not as good as the main controller, but the RAM is realized very precise without the tracking error. So now it would be great to combine both controllers in one application. And this is exactly what CST does. CST switches fully automatically between the main controller and the RAM controller as the user defines. The necessary controller structures and parameters are calculated by ICP automatically. Now, thinking of many applications in the industry, we know Unfortunately, some existing application setups are not flexible in terms of changing the controller structure. This might happen when systems run with controller modules or SPS controllers providing a fixed PID structure only. In this case, ICP calculates the perfect parameters as well for these fixed PID controller structures. 
The benefit is to have the best possible closed loop behavior with your fixed structure. And of course, without the time consuming calculations, but fully automatic calculation with ICP. However, even optimal parameterized fixed controller structures are not good enough to handle complex systems. If you want to check on your possibilities to implement expert controls, high capable and flexible controller CST, please visit us on our website at expertcontrol.com.